everybody. Thanks so much for joining our live today. My name is Zena El Sharif and I'm a field education trainer with the Wella Company. Um, and today I'm going to be joined by Mary Lynn. Um, and we are going to be showing you guys um, a multi dimensional look using free lights um, in a hand painting technique. And she is going to mix that with some foils using blonde doors. So I'm going to let her in here. If you guys have any questions throughout the live, make sure to throw them in the chat box. Or if you have any comments, throw them in the chat box. We love to see what you guys think. I think we're just connecting here. Oh, good morning. Hi, Tina. Hello, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining. Awesome, guys. Um, well, I'm Mary Lynn Rangel Perez. I'm a full-time field education trainer in the Vancouver area. Super excited to be here this morning with Zena to do this live on a multi-dimensional look that I've uh, prepped for you guys, and I'm going to teach you what I did today. Yay. I know, exciting, eh? Something a little different this morning, just to give it a little bit of fun. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, why I did this technique and why I kind of chose to go this route. So my thought process behind it is that we've been doing a lot of balayage, a lot of stuff. Highlights are kind of in and out a little bit. And I think people are kind of wondering, you know, how to incorporate them, maybe, you know, to do something different with them as well. So I wanted to kind of combine balayage and highlights together today. Um, and my thought behind it was that for people that are uh, maybe uh, growing out a global blonding and don't necessarily want to do the glo global blonding anymore, this would be a soft way to kind of transition to something a little softer, easier to grow out. Um, also, just to give different dimension than just doing balayage or just highlights. So this is why I chose this look today. Awesome. I can't wait to see. I know. It's exciting. So I'm going to show you guys, and Zina, please let me know if you guys can see properly. For sure. I'm going to bring you into my lovely mannequin. Uh, all right. That's perfect. Perfect. Excellent. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about sectioning here. So I've done three sections, and the reason why I did three sections with this is to make it kind of easy, simple. Uh, nothing too complicated and so something that's not going to take too long in you know in the chair so I'm going to do um, I'm gonna have to kind of turn her around again so I'm gonna start with the back here so I've done three kind of triangular sections and I also have the front piece here okay and what I'm gonna do I'm going to combine a mixture of highlights and some of the techniques that we um, use in our Illuminage um, application. So for some of you that maybe have watched, um, you know, some of our techniques being done on Illuminage, you'll see in there that the girls have done some zigzagging sections. Um, and so I am going to incorporate that today. And in between that, I'm going to do a fine slice with a medium weave in between. So on my zigzag section is where I'm going to be freehand painting, just like we would in our Illuminage technique, um, in a larger section. And in my medium weave, I'm going to be throwing in there some blonde door just to give um, maybe a little bit of a lighter kind of piece to it. And um, also just to give that different dimension to the hair. All right. There's any questions at all, feel free. Zena's going to be here to help me out today to answer questions or let me know what the questions are. And I'm sure she's already told you all about that. Mm -hmm. Nick's saying he loves a good zigzag. Awesome. Thanks, Nick. I'm going to try to do a good one for you. <laughs> and he also made a comment here, low maintenance will be huge this year. Yeah. And so that's probably kind of what, and that's actually a really good point. Thanks, Nick. Um, I think that was part of my thought process when during, you know, deciding to do this look, um, because I wanted to incorporate the fact that we are going into a little bit more of a low maintenance kind of um, year being, you know, with everything that's been going on. 
And I feel like people want that softer, but they still want to maximize being blonde, but just don't want the maintenance, right? So I figured for people that might be growing out old color and just don't know where to go with it, people that are tired of maybe highlights or balayage, this kind of just gives it a little bit of a swing to the, to the technique. All right. Dina, can we see properly? We're good? I think so. Yeah. Can I bring it down a little bit more? How's that? Oh, that's great. Much better. All right. So sorry, guys. Let me know if you can see. It's a little bit of an awkward uh, position here. But so what I'm doing is taking a good probably one inch section. I don't know if you guys can kind of see that in here. And I'm going to go in and do a zigzag. Okay. And just like our Illuminage technique, I am going to be leaving some of the pieces out here to give, again, dimension. Um, before I forget, I did start with a level seven is the base that I'm working on right now. Um, for some of you who may know the Illumina, um, I did a seven stroke seven is the base that I'm working with today. Okay. So we're going to start off with our freehand painting. And today I am using the free lights uh, blonde door free lights and I'm doing a 30 volume with this technique today okay so you want to start by putting a good amount on your brush and you want to make sure you paint that section really well in good saturation I'm really bad at using my paddle you guys I'm not gonna lie that's okay there's so many different <laughs> ways of there's so many different ways of, of applying I just I'm a very hands-on person, so the paddle is sitting right here for all of you. If you do want to use a paddle, it was my intention to use it, but it's just not going to happen today. So, um, yeah, so you just want a very good saturation. Make sure that all those hairs are in there. And then I just kind of went in with a little bit of product, not too heavy on the product on the way up because you don't want to leave any clumps. You don't want to, you know, make a mess. And then I just kind of went into the corners. Okay. And I still kind of left a little bit of that V in here to give a little bit of that, a little bit of that depth in there so that you still keep that dimension going. Nick says he likes using his hands too. Oh, thank you, Nick. Someone's at my door. Oh, well, I, I, I potentially have a delivery coming in too. So <laughs> my face is going really red because someone's at my door. <laughs> I'm like, what do I do? You can, you can go, gonna, you can go Andrew, I'm doing this if you want, Zena. I'm just gonna stay here. Okay. So, yeah. really so as you can tell here, I just saturated really well all the way through. You want to make sure you have an even saturation. And I always kind of flip and go under and just make sure that those little pieces are blended underneath there. Okay. Zena, are you, do you usually? Okay. Hold on a second. I'm so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> all right. So once I'm done doing this section, okay. This is where I've moved into doing a finer section, okay, okay. Um, for my weave. So take a fairly fine section, and what I want to do here is I'm going to leave the underneath piece just like I would with um, the freehand technique, but I am going to go in and really get a nice weave going on here okay i'm so sorry <laughs> that's okay <laughs> there's a talking about the highlight okay sorry about that guys there's work being done in my building and uh they were, they were knocking on my door <laughs> <laughs> so sorry that's okay so i try to kind of move this out of the way a little bit you just kind of want to go in you want to put a little bit of tension more at the root area right so you're not pressing on anything I get a little bit of product on my foil and then I pick it up. That way I'm not pressing down on my balayage at the bottom there. Okay. So here guys, I'm using the blonde door with a 20 volume. I do highly recommend that when you are doing it on not a mannequin, that you start with maybe a lower developer and kind of work your way through. Okay. We recommend no more than a 20 volume with our lighteners. So you want a nice, good saturation. Now, 
I did do a highlight, but I'm not necessarily going to go right to the root with it. So I'm just kind of feathering up a little bit here, just not to leave a demarcation line and just giving a really good saturation. Okay. All right. So we have a question here. Could you put your foils in first and then do your hair painting? I mean, at the end of the day, of course, right? It all depends on how you want to apply it. But for sure, I don't see why not. It just may make it a little harder to work in between the foils. And that's why I kind of chose to do it this way. But it all depends on your comfort level. What I love about having these foil pieces too are uh, having those, those pieces in foil kind of gives it like those brighter points too. So it just really adds those, that nice dimension you were talking about by That's having right. some brighter pieces. Correct. So, you know, being um, that we're using the, um, the, the free lights, you, you know, depending on the, on the level that you're starting with, you may not get to a level 10, right? So with using the blonde door, I feel like I'm able to get um, maybe some brighter pieces that I wouldn't get if I just did free lights. And it's really cool because you guys will be able to see it when um, I show you my finished product. Um, you'll see the high, you know, the really highs and the little bit lower. So there is like probably three different tones in my finished product. Hi, Nichelle. Hi, Nichelle. Vina, are you at, you know, do you use your hands a lot or are you more of a paddle kind of girl? Um, so I, it's funny, I'm watching you use your hands and I always use my paddle because I, I just hate having my hands dirty. I like, I'm constantly wiping. <laughs> so I'm watching you use your hands and question for you since I'm watching you. Um, so when you're using your hands on the ends there, are you just, so are you like, how are you putting the product on? Are you like just using it as your board or are you like smushing it in or like what um, are you doing with your hands there? Yeah, so basically as I'm going through, I don't know if you can see my glove here and I'm like you, I don't like getting my hands dirty, but I find that I, I get better accuracy by using my hands. So as I'm kind of pushing the product through, it is also going on to my glove. So, um, and I'm also picking it up to make sure that I'm saturating underneath. And that's why I will go and pick that back up. Um, I find that I just, um, I guess for me as a stylist, uh, I like to get in there and just um, really get that product in my hands. I'm just more of a feel person. So I just, if you look on the other side here, I have a full saturation. Awesome. Okay. So then I just kind of lift a little bit, just make sure there's no lines. And then what I do is I just kind of move this out of the way a little bit. And then I let that sit there. Okay. And then I do have to wipe my hands every section. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a question. Can you mix free lights with any other blonde or product? You can. The only uh, product that you can mix free lights with, um, and that's the developer, is the Magma. Um, as for powder, you cannot mix the powder with any other powders. Have you ever mixed free lights with magma powder? Uh, no, I have not. Have you? I have. I oh, have. <laughs> interesting. I know you can use a developer, but I've never gone the route of mixing it with the actual powder. I know, I know Nick, I know Nick is a fan of doing that too. Oh, um, I see. Yeah, he likes to mix, or maybe he'll tell us in the comments, he likes to mix his free lights lightener with some magma since they're both clay based. Oh, and he's, cool. And he's asking about extra cool. So he's asking what about extra cool? I think if it can be mixed with, with um, blonder free lights, I would say no. I would say no too, but unless he has an, an answer for that one for us. That would be amazing. Yeah, unless he's get, trying to give us a trick question, but I would yeah. say you can't mix it. I would say the same. I know you can intermix or extra cool with your multi-blonde powder. He's, he's saying it can. Oh, he's, 
throwing us a trick oh. question this morning. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> okay. All right. I've never done that before. So he's saying he can. You can mix your blonder free lights with your blonder extra cool. I've never done that. I and guess it's because extra cool kind of has like a clay base to it as well. Oh, interesting. I did not know that. Okay, wait, let me ask Nick this. He's saying yes, because it's also clay based. So I'm going to ask Nick this in the comments. So can you free paint? Can you mix extra cool with your free lights developer and free paint with it? Let's see what he says about that. Oh, I put him on the spot this morning, Zena. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. This is great. So handy having him here, isn't it? It really is. <laughs> Get a wealth of knowledge. I, let me, I can vouch for that. Michelle says she loves mixing her free lights in extra cool too. Interesting. I had no idea you can mix them. So we're all learning from each other, guys. This is a learning process today, everyone. So Zena, have you ever mixed balayage and highlights together? Yes, I do. Um, I love using, I love like putting in some foils and then balayaging the ends. Um, yeah. I think it gives some really great pops of brightness. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes I love just like putting in some foils and then just balayaging the ends with like free lights mixed with the 20 volume. If, if she's already bright and just to like kind of clean up her blonde a little bit. Um, yeah. When we're mixing free lights with our developers. So they have the three designated developers. So there's the 20 volt, the 30 volt and the 40 volt. And I like to really think about these developers as minimum lift, moderate lift and maximum lift. So that's kind of how I choose my developer choice when using free lights. So sometimes even just painting some of the ends to like clean up a blonde or just to add a bit of brightness is all it needs. So just mixing it with like a low volume peroxide works too. Okay, awesome. Nick says Nick says he prefers to mix it with free lights powder as the consistency is great. Oh, interesting. And so then you would use any of your levels of developer with your free lights developer. Yes. He says he's only ever used 40 volt free lights developer. I actually use 20 volt well, okay, I use 40 volt like 80% of the time, but I would I think I use 20 volt more than you would think because I feel like 20% of the time is a is a lot for like yeah. <laughs> I guess it just all depends on your clients too right and what you're what you're kind of starting off with well I love free lights because I feel like you know people that are like you just said that are already blonde you know and just want to maximize those ends and give that brightness free lights is amazing for that Oh, Nichelle says she loves using 20 volume for cleaning up a previous balayage. Me too. Sorry about that. All right. So this is my last piece in this section. So um, I'm just going to uh, maximize my zigzag here and get lots of brightness at the top. I love using a zigzag. It just really like gives it more of a seamless look too, which is nice. Yeah. And it's also nice for the highs and lows, right? Like it, you could also for the people that are wondering, I, I know the question hasn't been asked, but if you wanted to also do, you know, the pieces that I'm leaving out, you could also color them if you wanted to with, you know, a, a, a darker color, if you wanted a even stronger contrast. Just to give more depth? Just to give more depth, absolutely. If that's kind of the look you were looking for, right? Okay, so this one I went a little higher, just being that it's the top piece, just to maximize some brightness there. Just get this out of the way. All right, so here's my back section. So on the sides, I am gonna continue doing the same thing here. I'm gonna turn her around a little bit for you. Can you guys see that? Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, so in here, I'm going to work on a diagonal um, section. 
still doing about one inch, same technique as I was doing in the back. And then that way, it's just out of the way and out of the face as I'm coloring. Oh, Nick says he loves to do two different formulas on one section, use, utilizing free lights and magma. Oh, interesting. I have yet to use um, magma with, um, as like freehand painting. Have you used it, Zena, yet? Oh yeah, I love it. I love the magma reds. I would use those quite often, um, but I've yet to use them with my, with my free lights. Yeah, he says it gives great dimension. And that's why I love it too, because magma, it's great because you know, you're using free lights as, your, as a, a way to get those pieces you know, as light as they're gonna get. And then magma is a great way to lift and tone the hair and give it that added dimension because what other way can you have kind of all these tones with, with you know, just, totally. bleach, just one bleach, you know what I mean? Uh, absolutely, I 100% agree. So that is a really good point. So here's my weave again. So just, um, I don't know if you guys can see how thick I'm kind of doing my weave. Oh Does yeah. That help? Oh yeah, that helps. Yeah. So, a medium weave, I mean, you can customize it, make it a baby light if you want to. You could, you know, customize it to whatever you're doing with your clients and what the end result that you want, right? Trying to work on it. I'm trying to work on an angle here so you guys can see it's a little challenging. Yeah, it's a bit awkward, I know. You're doing a great job, though. <laughs> we can see. Perfect. That's all that matters. Nick was saying um, he finds it's best doing a one to two mixing ratio when using Magma in Freelights Developer, and he loves one to one with Freelights Powder and Developer. That's so funny because I am exactly the same with Freelights. I like a one to one mixing ratio, but okay. for some reason, Magma feels a bit like so, way thicker to me, and I also mix it one to two. What do you? What's your mixing for for Freelights? Free lights, I'm a one to one and a half, actually. Okay. Yeah. And then for magma, I would probably be the same as you guys, a one to two. I think one to one and a half for free lights is definitely a bit more common. I think so, too. I feel like one to two is just too liquidy um, for, for my personal taste. And the um, one to one, I find it just a little too thick for me anyways. <laughs> Nick, Nick said, Nick saying more claggy. And then he said, <laughs> is that a word? <laughs> I, I can't say I've never heard it, but we'll make it a word for today. I don't know what claggy means. Does he know what it means since he's the one saying it? Did he or no? No, didn't think that. I, cloggy? I don't know. Cloggy? Oh, sticky. He sticky. Means sticky. <laughs> it must be a British word. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as I'm working kind of up towards my section here, and I'm going to get out of the way in a second to show you guys, but because it is still on the side of the head, um, you know, when she puts her hair back, we definitely want to maximize on some of that brightness around the face. And again, this is something you can customize um, depending on your client's wants and needs. Um, but I don't know if you can see this, how around the face here, I'm definitely kind of bringing that right up to kind of maximize that brightness. Okay. I'm excited for this money piece you have sectioned out in the front. Oh, yes. So the money piece is going to be very exciting. And again, um, I am, you, I'm doing it this way, but for people who want maybe more dimension around the face, um, then that's also something that they can do. But with this mannequin, she was very particular of wanting lots of blonde around the face. Nick says he's loving this technique. Oh, thank you, Nick. I had a great teacher. 
<laughs> he is the best. Yes, he is. Can you guys still see Zena? Not too much. Oh yeah, we can okay. see. So it's important that I'm only putting pressure kind of up here because I definitely don't want to press down. So that's why I'm applying my lightener kind of towards the top. And then just picking up my foil and just resting it in my hands so that it's not um, pushing down on anything else underneath. Okay. Um, I know you mentioned earlier that these techniques were like a bit from the Illuminage technique. And I, I'm kind of feeling like it's a bit of like a hybrid of Brazilian Illuminage and Illuminage because you, you almost have those those foil pieces that are going to like veil over those balayage sections. Yeah, that's true. Very true. That's a good combo. And if you guys haven't seen Illuminage or Brazilian Illuminage, make sure to go back into our um, IGTVs posted on Wella Canada West because we have tons of videos on Illuminage and Brazilian Illuminage. You guys want to check out those techniques too. And in those techniques, the reason why I'm doing it this way is that you can, and Zena, correct me if I'm wrong, customize it, you know, to using um, whichever part you feel you like, or you could do the full look. Is that not correct? Yeah, totally. And, and Nick's saying in the chat that Illuminage is such a great foundation for so many other techniques. So it's so great to just like take those foundational techniques and then make it your own, like how Marilyn is doing with this mannequin. This just teaches people little tricks and things to do in the salon if their clients want something different, right? I'm going to have to block the view a little bit here for a second, guys. We can still see. Okay. Excellent. So it's really important um, that, you know, you make sure you have a very good saturation with our free lights because being that it's clay based, if you don't put enough product on, it won't be able to um, work the way it should because it will dry out on the exterior of the hair, um, but will remain uh, moist on the interior. So if you don't have a good saturation, you will have blotches and spots and pockets. <laughs> Emily, hi, Emily Baker. She's saying saturation, yes. It is key to using this product. Nick says, when it's white, it's going to be light. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was really happy with um, my end result. And I'm looking forward to showing you guys just how awesome it is. We are almost there. Now, these mannequins definitely have way more hair around the hairline than the average person does. Do you find that, Zena? Yeah, I guess some of them. I guess my mannequins have less breakage around the hairline than most people. She, she's got so much hair around the hairline. Nick says this is a quick technique. It is. So you guys can see that, you know, I'm, I'm going through it fairly quickly. If my angle wasn't so awkward, I probably would be pretty close to being done at this point. Um, after this, the money piece at the front is actually fairly quickly. I did not incorporate any highlights at the front. Um, and I'm going to talk about that when we get to the front piece here. Emily's just asking what the base color is. Um, so Emily, I used a level seven um, I did seven stroke seven with Illumina is what I did as a base. And are you using in your foils, are you using blonde or plex? Uh, no, I'm using our multi blonde. Multi blonde with 20 volume, right? 20 volume. Yes. Yeah. You could for sure use our blonde or plex um, with this technique if um, you needed to or wanted to. 100%. 
And what is your mixing ratio for your blonde or multi-blonde powder? My, my blonde or multi-blonde uh, powder, I did a one to one and a half as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. So one to one and a half for both your free lights and your multi-blonde powder. Correct. All right, guys. So this is the part where, um, as a stylist and with your client, you want to kind of discuss how much highs and lows you want at the top, if you want more highs and lows towards the bottom and inside, and maybe keep the top um, on the brighter side. I am doing, my piece here is going to be my zigzag section. Um, I am maximizing the brightness here on the top, but still leaving kind of that depth. Um, so you can also leave more dimension if you want, just depending on how bright you'd like the top to be with your end result. So is that your last piece on top there? I have one more and then we are done. Okay, so um, actually I have two more, I lied. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do here is just do a very, a, a weave again, and then my last piece will be my last zigzag, but it will be a fairly um, thinner section of zigzag. Nick's just asking if this is gonna be posted to the Wella Facebook, Facebook group. And yes, I'll, I'll post the videos um, to the Wella Facebook group. If you guys aren't a part of this Facebook group, by the way, everyone should join. It is called the Wella Professionals Global Hair Community page. Maybe Nick can type that into the chat just in case. But um, such a great Facebook group. So many resources. It's such a great community. Tons of formulas. It's amazing to see um, tons of different tones and formulas for sure. It's great for stylists to go back to resorts to um, things that maybe they're just looking for answers and can't find them. There are so many people on there around the world. Such a good inspo page too. <laughs> yes, it really is. There we go. It's in the chat. So it's well a professional global hair community page. And Nick is one of the admins on this page. So highly suggest everyone joins. My mannequin has gotten too tall for me. All right. So this will be my last piece up here. And um, it is a fairly light section. So I'm, it actually, I'm not going to zigzag it too much. I'll take a couple little pieces out just to give it a little bit of a low. Um, and then Nick's asking when our next live is. Oh gosh, when is the next one? The next one, I'm sure. I think there is one. To is there one tomorrow? Uh, there is one tomorrow. It's not on Wella Canada West though. That one's going to be on Modern Beauty Supply, um, and Michelle and I will be on there. We're going to be talking about Color Renew, and we are going to be doing a Color Renew demo. Ooh, that's Sorry. exciting. That's a good yeah. it's gonna That's be good. really good for people to know about that because it's a great product. They just feel like people need to know more about it. Oh, yeah. All right. So this is where we are. I'm going to move her around a little bit. Okay. So we are at the front piece here. Oh, all right. So what I'm going to do here is literally I'm going back with my pieces. Can you guys see what I'm doing? I'm not blocking the view. I'm going to be going back this way to maximize the brightness around the face. And um, I am going to work on a little bit of a diagonal section. And I'm only going to do about three or four sections here. And I'm not going to be zigzagging, but I am going to be painting. 
on both sides. All right, Nichelle says our next live on Wella Canada West is March 26, Hacker Hoax with Chelsea Mann. Thanks, Nichelle. I could not remember if the next one was Hacker Hoax or not, so I was like, I better not say. <laughs> Thanks, Nichelle. <laughs> Luckily, we have people on the live today looking out for us. <laughs> right? It's very informative today. All right. So, just getting my ends very well saturated. Okay. I'm going to brush up a little bit and softly around here. And I'm going to kind of pull this out of the way and really get in here. Would you ever do that money piece first? Um, you know, I thought about it. Um, you totally could. Absolutely. It's just um, an awkward um, angle that I'm at right now. <laughs> okay. Because the mannequin um, is a little low for this piece. Oh, Nichelle says after Hacker Hoax on March 26th, April 7th, we are going to have curly Brazilian Illuminage on Wella Canada West live as well. Exciting. Yes. I can't wait to see curly Brazilian Illuminage. That one is amazing because I feel like a lot of our curly haired clients kind of got left out a little bit, right? It's kind of nice that there's, you know, some techniques out there for them now. I think it's awesome. So are you just kind of packing product on underneath yeah. and then? Yeah, so I'm packing product on, um, I just kind of did the hairline a little bit to maximize the brightness for when she wears it back. Um, and then I'm getting, can you see properly? She's a bit out of the shot, but. Oh. <laughs> Okay, let me just, uh, I can always realign so you guys can see better. Is this kind of like a block color? Yeah, so I kind of blocked the front a little bit just because she wanted to be quite blonde at the front. So I just wanted to maximize blocking at the front for maximum brightness. So I'm just going to see if I can, how's that? Oh, that's perfect. Better? Excellent. Yep. Okay. So this is going to be my last piece, um, depending on where you part. This is important. Um, I did a middle part with her. So this is my middle piece. I'm going to start with the top where um, the hair will probably lay more flat at the top because of the middle part. So if she changed her part or like if she parted it on the side, would you have done it to her parting? Um, I... I want to say that I would probably stick to a middle part and just making sure I kind of maximize underneath as well. Um, because when you are going to potentially move your part, you could definitely just get different dimensions from different angles, right? If you are going to always wear it in a middle part or a side part, then I probably would um, do it in the part line that you usually would wear the hair. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Okay. I mean, I find like, I find balayage and like these looks are just like very like fluid and like naturally organic. So usually people don't have like a set parting because it's just a very like natural flowy look. Yeah, correct. All right. So I don't know if you guys can see properly. I'm just going to turn her around a little bit. So there's the three money pieces. It depends on you can go with intersection, you can go Put some, you know, highlights in there if you wanted to, some low lights, whatever it is that you kind of want to customize it to. Um, so this is the sectioning. It can be very fast if you want it to be for a quick, easy service in the salon. Um, and also you can definitely be more technical if you wanted to. All right. Are you guys ready for the final look? Yes. Excellent. All right, so let me know if you guys can see this properly. Can we bring her up maybe? Yes, I can totally bring her up for you guys. Can we see it? 
Oh, there we go. Oh, um, yeah. Yes. Uh, there we go. So as you guys can tell, um, there is a lot of movement in here. And especially like right here, you can see a bit of the low light. You can see those little highlights in there that have that brightness and a little bit of a pop. Um, I maximized the lightness on the ends. Um, and also what I did today is I toned her with one of our new shades, the nine stroke five nine. Um, for those of you who don't know that shade, it is a red violet cendre in our Illumina portfolio. And I also added for a little bit of funness since summer is hopefully on the way, a little bit of titanium rose. So I did a 50 grams of nine stroke five nine to 10 grams of titanium rose with our 1.9 um, pastel developer. Love it. Yeah. So this is the final look. Uh, try to show you guys the front a little bit so you can see the different tones here. That's awesome. Yeah. I love the light reflection in Illumina. It's so much shine, you know, very translucent, beautiful tones. That nine stroke five nine and titanium rose are beautiful summer colors. I know somebody else in our team that really loves the pinks, so. <laughs> awesome. Any questions on the technique, the formula, anything that was done? No questions, but just some comments. Beautiful, stunning, looks great. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone. I'm so happy you could join today. And um, thank you to Moder uh, thank you to Wella Canada West for having us on today. All right. Thanks so much, Marilyn. Thanks for joining, guys. Don't forget to tune in for our next live. So that is March 26th for Hacker Hoax with Chelsea. Um, and yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Awesome, guys. Thanks for being on. Have a great day. Thanks, Dina. Bye. Bye.